You are listening to Ideas and Leaders podcast. I'm Elena Paventa, Executive Communication Coach and TEDx Organizer. With each episode, I'll share with you communication tips and ideas from top business leaders to help you excel in your career. Hello and welcome to Ideas and Leaders podcast. In our next episode, we have a special guest. We have Brett Kaufman with us today, and he is an entrepreneur. He's a marketing consultant who provides marketing and copywriting services to business owners and helps them to maximize their time and money. So I would love to speak with Brett today about copywriting and about funnels, of course. Hi, Brett. It's great to have you on the show. Hi, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. So, Brad, what is your story? How did you become a marketing consultant? Yeah. So as we dive into copywriting in my story, I always like to start out with copywriting is words that sell and words that connect. And everyone has a different relationship to that. So copywriting isn't just the words on the page, but how you're communicating, like how we're doing it, or if you're on stage or if you're on a sales call, all that is copywriting. And like, some people, I fell into it backwards without even knowing what it was. So uh, to shorten my elongated story, I just came back from living abroad in Tel Aviv University in Israel, and I had an amazing experience there. But I came back and um, experienced extreme culture shock because after that amazing year that I went through, my environment was quite different than what I lived through. And so I went through depression. There's other reasons I went into that, but it got me in a very dark state. And in one of my darkest moments, I turned to a book that was recommended to me called Psycho-Cybernetics by Dr. Maxwell Maltz. Are you familiar with that book? No, no. Oh, it's amazing. So it's, um, I, maybe I'm a little bit biased because of what it did to me, but it's amazing in the sense that in the 1960s, he was a plastic surgeon and people would come to him and be like, make me look pretty. So you'd be like a nose job, whatever it was, and send them out into the world. But two weeks later, they would all come back still upset, be like, I don't get it. I look beautiful, but yet I feel ugly. And that was fascinating to him. And what he realized is that your mind's a circle mechanism. So your thoughts affect your speech, affect your action. And in that moment, I was like, okay, my words, the words I speak can change my beliefs about myself and can change my actions. So again, I had no idea what copywriting was, but that was an anchoring thought. And so at the time I was trying to obviously make myself feel good. If you ever experience depression, you know, that's a very hard thing to do. So I dove headfirst into politics because I live right outside of DC and I fell in love with an issue very important to me, which was pro-Israel lobbying. And I, I, got, I spent about five years in politics working on both sides of the aisle. Um, and specifically, I started working in both, um, bipartisan pro-Israel lobbying where both sides of the aisle got to yell at me, which I always enjoyed, where my whole job was to bring Republicans and Democrats together to help lobby on foreign policy issues to strengthen the U.S. and her allies, specifically in the Middle East and Israel. And I, my job was cold calling. And so I would cold call, let's say I cold called you, get you to set up a meeting with me and then uh, tell you about what we do and ask you from anywhere between $2,000 to $100,000 first time meeting me. And uh, you got a lot of very colorful answers, a lot of you know very colorful words thrown at you. But I ended up setting um, the most amount of money in the program because, which is about three million in two years, because I understood that how to communicate to someone, how to, like we'll talk about a little bit, enter the conversation through their door. And I realized it was my emails, it was my tech scripts, it was my how I was communicating on the phone, how I was structuring, so to speak, my pitch when we were one-on-one. -on -one. And then eventually I went to just a marketing conference that interests me in my area. And someone's like, oh, that's copywriting. I'm like, that's copywriting. So I took a course to actually see what copywriting, quote unquote, because it was a podcast was. And I'm like, oh, excuse me. I was like, oh, wow, I've been doing this for like five years without even knowing what it was. And then I'm like, let me see if I can do this professionally because I already so to speak, started doing it prior to that. So then eventually started a marketing company to do it full time. Wow, that's a great story. So, um, so what is copywriting in, in your understanding and uh, how, um, how do you approach it? It's a great question. So copywriting, words that sell and words that connect. Now, it used to just be words that sell. But now we have words that connect because in the time that we are in marketing, 
This is being aware of your audience. People need to feel like you get them better than they understand themselves and that you are there for them. And there's uh, when we teach our clients, we say enter the conversation through their door, which means their understanding of their problem and then that they actually need a solution for it. And so if you, I can come to you and say like, yeah, I have a solution to your problem, but if I'm not connecting with you, think about like, like look at uh, personal trainers, right? So I happen to know one of these personal trainers that um, this person is overweight, but he's a personal trainer. And of course people are not going to connect with them if they don't, if they don't come from that space. So they want someone that like was in their body type that then, then help them get that result. So you're trying to enter the conversation through their door at the same level that they are. And then obviously use words to convince them or realize that you have the solution to their problem. So that's what copywriting is, words that sell and words that connect. So what do you think uh, now as you're working with, with uh, your clients, with, with entrepreneurs, what do you think are the top mistakes that business owners make when uh, uh, writing uh, their emails, creating their funnels? So we say there's a few mistakes. One of them is putting this to you know to the end, meaning like it's not something that I'm going to focus on because I can get I can outsource it or I can get someone else to do it. You whether you want to do it or not, you need to understand how to do it. Just like if your car broke down, you're going to go to a mechanic. If you don't know what he or she's telling you, they're going to take advantage of you potentially. And like, how can you know that? Oh, your car is broken for these following reasons. You're like, oh no, and they'll be like, yeah, it costs you a billion dollars, and go, okay, you don't know any different. So you need to be able to recognize what good copy is so then you can either outsource it or you can do it yourself. So that's the first key. And so the second key is knowing how to write in their voice. So there's actually uh, something that we teach everyone when, we first, when they first start, um, whether it's for themselves or like becoming a copywriter, what we do. And that is a five step that you can do to always make sure you know how to speak in your, in your audience's voice. And so number one, uh, th this is my lazy man approach because I, I was like, I'm trying to find my shortcut to do it and how, where, where's my fundamentals. Yeah. The first, yeah, the first thing I want everyone to do is record like this, or if we're on a podcast, record all your sales calls with consent for the person, of course. And then I want you to go to otter.ai and I want you to transcribe it. And because once it's transcribed, you can read the words on the, on, on the doc. Then I want you to take three highlighters. So now print out the doc, three highlighters, one blue which is their, their dreams, one red, which is their fears, and one green, which is anything about money. And then, um, so that, that's, that's, that's a third stage, so mark up that document. And stage number four would be then to put it in, organize it based on what they just saw and then uh, what you just read. And stage number five is to test it in your copy. Why will this work well for you? Because you have the data of exactly what your commonalities of people that are like your avatar have said, and like attracts like. So you don't need to guess anymore. You already have exactly what people want to hear in this Google Docs that you just created. Yeah, yeah. This is uh, a great method to know the, the language of your customers, to know what are their fears. And yeah, so we can write actually in the language of our customers or our potential customers and address their fears. And um uh, so, so what, uh, what other mistakes um, you, would, you would name? So something that is connected, what you mentioned is something that is connected with writing about us, not about them. So we need to focus in writing about what actually our customers want. And what, what else do you see sometimes yeah. that can be improved? Right. So that's a great one to know exactly what they want. So the other one, one of my favorites is, because uh, one of the mistakes is people, basically there's three categories of mistakes. Number one, you don't take the time to identify what good copywriting is. And that's where you just need to be aware of what your competition's saying, what exactly are you offering? Like, can you say it so crisply clearly or just makes sense, so fundamentals? Number two, do you exactly know what your, what your person wants? And that is like the exercise I just gave you. And the second, go on Amazon. Um, and I don't know if your people might've heard this one or not, this is something I discovered last year, which like, I'm so glad I stumbled upon it. When you go to Amazon, you want to look at the top 15, 10 books, whatever you want in your niche. And then I want you to look at the reviews, but don't look at the star one or star uh, five, meaning like the worst or the best. Why? They're inherently biased. 
star five could be like, ah, this was amazing. They could know the person. They could just be someone super passionate. And one, they could just have it out for that person. Only read star threes. Yeah. Why is that? Because it's part good, part bad. And it's an honest uh, review. Someone's like, I like this part, but I didn't like this part. Why is that important? Again, going back to Google Docs, because that is like my existence, I am tracking in there the five things that people are saying that were positive and the five negative things. Why? Because the best business owners, not even copyright, not even marketers, business owners are able to identify trends of their people. And that's how you know how to like write to them and what they want. So I'm always looking for patterns. And then the, the, the third biggest mistake that we often see is um, not injecting enough personality into it. And this is just simply with everyone and their mama, all on online market or all online business owners promising like the world to them, what's going to make you stand out? So if they don't read it and go, wow, I would identify with Brett. I would love to grab a beer with him or, you know, whoever that they're learning from or, or trying to buy from, they're not going to buy. People want personality. People want to know you when they're buying something, even if it's just a product, not just a service. Yeah. So we need to show a little bit of personality, maybe share some personal stories, right? Tell something about ourselves or how, how else can we show our personality? Yeah, so we do a fun exercise with anyone that we work with where we say, come up with like, let's say, pretend you're having a conversation with one of your close friends. What are some of the weird, quirky things he or she or they would say about you? You know, as an example, for me, the only bagel that ever exists in the world is everything bagel. If you eat another bagel in front of me that's not everything bagel, I'll think less of you because like, you can't do that. Only everything bagel is the best thing on earth. So I like to share that as a lesson of like this again, that's a personality thing for me. Everything bagels I find so delicious. Therefore, that's a personality thing that you might resonate with if you like that stuff. My partner, John, who's a best-selling author, um, he loves pink starbursts. So anytime someone eats, there's candy, and there's no pink starburst. He's like, I don't want to eat this garbage. I only eat pink starburst. So you're showing this different personality. My other partner, Yoga, we all just happen to like junk food. Forgive us. He loves Captain Crunch. One time he was staying over with me, visiting. I gave him, um, I think it was tricks. And he's like, I can't eat this garbage. I only eat Captain Crunch. These are the small personality bits that we all connect with. Yeah. And you don't need to necessarily like the same things I do, but you now know where I stand on what we call like weird opinions held strong. Yeah, yeah. So we need to show this, uh, uh, you know, to sprinkle our our personality all over yeah. our copy, because we want our our clients to get to know us also, not only to get to know our products and you know features and and benefits. So yeah, I think uh, I think that uh, it is really great advice. And what if, let's say, uh, someone does not have time to do this themselves or maybe doesn't want to and they would they want to to hire a copywriter so what do we need to look for when we are looking for a copywriter to, to hire in our business sure the first thing is that copywriting should be the most expensive investment that you make why because i don't care if the funnel is the most beautiful funnel in the world and we've seen this in the 12 years and 45 million we generate for our clients. If the writing isn't fantastic, and I'll define what fantastic means, it will not convert to the highest potential. Mm. What fantastic means is that it's written like it's coming from us having a one-on-one -on -one conversation, and then me, the receiver, feels completely understood by you. And so the first mm. thing, like I said, make it the most, uh, make, make your most expensive investment because it'll pay off 10, 20 times the amount. And number two, when you're looking for copywriters, you need to be able to test them that if they can write in your voice, first and foremost, anyone can do research on the industry, weight loss, dating, what it doesn't matter what it is, but can they write like you? So that means also holding up a mirror. Do you know your story inside and out? Do you know your mannerisms? Do you know how you communicate? Because if you cannot do that, especially if you're selling on stage or on one-on-one -on -one calls, there will be a disconnect. So there, we talk about three C's and uh, that make a funnel convert: connection, captivating, and congruency. Congruency is if the messaging is slightly off from one part of your funnel to, let's say, they talk to you on a sales call. If it's off, they'll be like, mm, "You wouldn't say that. That doesn't feel like you." I'm not going to opt in because there's 
I, there's some there's some disconnect here like it's a feeling we all mm-hmm. get yeah so they yeah so you need to know yourself and then know how to explain to someone and then you need to test them can they write in your voice yeah yeah so once again what are those three c's are congruency and what else connection so congruency is the messaging uh off because sometimes you yeah. can promise one thing but it's slightly off on the next stage of your funnel like a sales page right to an email connection does it feel like i'm talking directly to you and we all do this when we're selling on stage or one-on-one or in a group like yeah we all we all speak this way people feel that energy and the third is captivating meaning is it a fantastic story is it feeling like i'm reading a movie like we like to say that same excitement you get on the edge of your seat does it feel that way when you're talking about the excitement behind your product and how it can solve this problem for me yeah yeah so three c's um are really important and and uh i think that uh, it is really important to to have a good copywriting but sometimes we may not understand actually what works and what doesn't and what do you think if we have a funnel and maybe it is working but maybe it is not working as it as it was supposed to work uh, where should we look at uh, in order to, to find w- what is working and what is not working? Yeah, I'm assuming you're referring to what's working in the marketplace. Yeah, yeah. So first off, um, first thing you want to do, look at similar products or services that are like yours and see what your competition is doing. Now, this is not to copy because you're, again, your people, you have to remember, your buyer is very sophisticated. They will know if this sounds like somebody else but you can get an idea of how are they positioning something. Easy example. Uh, when we launched our signature course, Captivating Copywriting, it's a copywriting course. Um, it did sell like 300K since we, since we launched it all organically. When we first launched it, the new iPhone came out. And at the time it was $1,000. And so what we were positioning against was the iPhone, essentially saying, yeah, you can spend a thousand dollar once for an iPhone, or you can spend that thousand dollars in this course and you'll learn by module three how to make three iPhones, how to make four iPhones. Why? Because we show you how to track the client and like, you know, and then write the copy that will increase your conversions. So you can look at what other people are doing and understand a very key concept called price anchoring, right? Why is this? Another really cool one that I saw is obviously people are very heavily in the crypto craze right now. Should I invest in Bitcoin, Ethereum, whatever it is? I saw a fantastic ad saying, sure, your crypto portfolio went up, I'm just making a number of 30%, but this, you can invest in this wine bottle and this value of this wine bottle went up 60%. So if I'm trying to increase my net worth, well, that was a fantastic ad because now this wine bottle saying you can double your net worth from this versus investing in Bitcoin. But I was like, oh, that's really interesting. So you can get an idea of how other people are positioning what they do, but to tie it into what we were saying earlier, it all comes down to then you making sure you hit your three C's very clearly because your three C's plus knowing how to position it based around your competition is doing, that will ensure your funnel will convert. Yeah. And um, if we have a good landing page and uh, we we have a, we came up with with a good copy, we have the the product and um, we we, um, are thinking about the, about nurturing our uh, our leads, our clients, potential clients, and um, what would you recommend to put into this email sequence that uh, we are we are sending to our new potential clients? How to actually make them interested? How to make them stay? How to to make them interested in our products? That is a fantastic question. So thank you for asking that. First and foremost, um, if you ever feel like you're annoying your list, you're emailing them too less, too little. So always email them more. We always just say, do add one, because you, know, you have to get comfortable to doing it, right? You know, you, you have to get over your own limited beliefs about it, but start with adding one new email per week to what you're doing. Now we email, currently we email our, our audience. We have a 50,000 person email list three times a week. We know people email their audience every day, so seven times a week. So your, your list will let you know. But in regards to what you're referring to, the nurture sequence. So in this example, let's say someone opted into a lead magnet or they just watched my webinar and they did not buy yet. And we're trying to get them to convert to clients. Well, there are standard emails that you can write. When I say standard, we always believe in frameworks, not templates. 
um, because templates are fill in the blank. They don't work because why? They're not in your language. Frameworks are like principles. They never go extinct. One of them is very simply an FAQ, meaning the frequently asked questions you hear and the easiest thing, the easiest way to write this or what's the biggest objections you've heard on sales calls. If you're selling like, you know, a product that they usually hear customer complaints, again, going back to Amazon, what like the complaints they're seeing in the review. So FAQ, mm -hmm. another one's Q and A. So what's the difference? Q and A is saying commonly asked questions you get. FAQ is overcoming objections. Q and A is people just asking questions. They'd be like, hey, I got these questions about the service. I'm going to address them here. Uh, number three is retelling your story. Because again, they need to fall in love with you. Even if it's a product, they need to fall in love with the brand. Who are you? What do you stand for in the marketplace? What makes you different? So share your story. Um, uh, fourth one is limiting beliefs and, or myths about the industry. So as an example, like I started off earlier, people be like, I can hire a copywriter on Fiverr or I don't have to pay attention to it. I'm like, no, copywriting should be your most expensive investment. It's a limiting belief. Why? And then I'll show them examples. When they hired, you know, I was giving example one of our clients. He was doing six figures a month in his business. We rewrote his funnel and then 10X to seven figures a month. He added no additional ad spend, no additional salespeople, nothing like that. What was the difference? The copy was in his voice and it followed the three C's. That's a limiting belief. And then the, the, the fifth one everyone knows is case studies. Now, um, if you allow me to be a geek real quick and explain why I love testimonies so much, uh, we figured this out through a lot of trial and error, a lot of like banging my head against the wall. That when testimonies are structured a certain way, they will convert, but they're not structured, structured a certain way, your people will tune them out and be like, yeah, whatever, this is like same old. Old testimonies are, this person joined my program. Now they're making a million dollars. Life is great. That's crap. New testimonies are be like, Brett joined my program. Brett had these problems. Brett came to me specifically trying to solve A, B, and C. Brett and I work together and now Brett's life looks like this. So what's the difference? I'm bringing an awareness to what, my, what Brett's problem was prior to working with me, what we went through together, what we solved, and now what his life looks like afterwards, which then of course you can tie in the monetary amount. Why that's good is again, like attracts like, going back to the five steps of rapport, you know, to know what your people want. And so if you're able to position, hey, I've helped someone just like you and don't just tell them, you're showing them by the breakdown of like, this is a person's problem. And here's why they work with me. And here's what their life looks like afterwards. You'll get people to be like, oh, and that, that's not a conscious thing. That's a subconscious thing. They're like, that person truly gets me. And that's where sales happen in the subconscious mind, not the conscious decision making. Yeah, great. And uh, I think I, I just love this structure. So we need to show actually how how we helped the person, not that everything is fantastic now and what was the right. problem and uh, what, what is going on with this person right now. And uh, I think that, you know, even listening to you, I'm kind of interested. Oh, this is uh, this is something that I would like to hear. Definitely. Uh, because I, there are a lot of testimonials out there which are um, something like oh this program is great but why it is great what uh, what did it give me um, yeah. yeah so you believe basically in email marketing do you think that uh, this is still a thing because uh, now many people say that oh our inboxes are full and maybe it is not working that well everything is landing in our you no know, spam and and we don't open emails anymore so do you think that uh, it actually has a future? Oh, yes. Those people respectfully are full of crap and don't know what they're talking about for the following reason. Anytime you sign up for anything, what do you give them? Your email address. Anytime you actually check your email, why are you then checking it? Because you want something from that person you gave the email address to. When those people speak about it, it's because they're jaded because they're probably used to getting a crap amount of um, poor emails. Same thing. How many times have you checked your Facebook inbox and someone's like, join my free Facebook group. We're talking about A, B, and C. And you're like, barf. It's like you and everyone doing the same thing or join my webinar. It's like, I know what you're doing. So that's just marketing. And email has been around since before any other social media. And email will be around till way past the end of the cycle of these social media channels. Why is that? Because email is a direct one-to-one -one conversation. When people are worrying about censorship, 
when, and we don't, you know, ha I mean, this is my background in politics, but happy to dive into whatever. You mentioned COVID on Instagram. It, the, the tag has to come up on your posts. It says it's just COVID information. Same thing with Facebook. It doesn't matter. It, now, since social media started censoring that topic, just as an example, that means any topic can be free reign for it to be censored. Email, it cannot. The reason why promotional versus primary, referring to like spam versus your main inbox, simply comes down to the fact of what you're doing wrong when you're sending the email that puts it in email jail. And so if you learn to overcome that, your emails will get great deliver deliverability, which means your people are gonna be excited if they're great emails and they're gonna wanna read from you and they're gonna want to buy from you. We've been doing this, like I said, for over a decade. We make most of our money from email marketing and we are constantly emailing our list, building relationships with them because we feel like that's the best one-on-one -on -one way to do that. So um, you just have to know how to do it the right way. Perfect, perfect. Thank you so much, Brad, for all of your tips. It is uh, just amazing. Uh, and uh, we learned so much for such a short period of time. Uh, if our listeners want to know more, to learn more from you, where can they find you? And uh, I know that you have something interesting to offer also. So this is the time to share it. Yeah. Um, first off, thank you again for having me on here. It's been an absolute pleasure. The, there's two ways, and I'll give you both links for the show notes. Number one, you can contact me directly on Facebook. You'll talk to me, not my VA. That is Brett, B-R-E-T-T, -T, Kaufman, K-A-U-F-M-A-N. I'll give you the link, don't worry. The second is my email list. Uh, that is wellspringmedia.com. That's wells, like W-E-L-L-S, and then spring, so that S-P-R-I-N-G, media, and uh we have a training called a free training called post to profits. So you can apply these tips that we're telling you. And in this training, you will learn exactly how to write copy that converts for your social media posts, for your emails and, and for your sales pages. And you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. So we like to always back up what we're saying. This free training will show you exactly how to do that entire thing. So all you have to do is opt into our email list and you'll get it automatically sent to you. And then of course, feel free to ask us any question that you have under the sun, because we're always here to serve. And uh, words matter, words are our thing, words have saved my life and just help, uh, just help both my partners in different ways. We can always talk about a different time, but. Words are the most important part of your business. You say it passionately when you speak to someone one-on-one, -on -one, make sure your words feel the exact same way like they would talk to you that uh, if they're having a direct conversation with you. And so that's why we do what we do. Perfect, perfect. Thank you so much, Brett, for, for our interview and for what you're offering also to our listeners. So to everyone who is listening to us, go to our show notes and uh, click uh, those links and connect with Brett. Thank you so much for being with us on Ideas and Leaders. It was a pleasure talking to you, Brett. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thank you for listening to Ideas and Leaders podcast. Did you enjoy this episode? Let me know that you listened by tagging me in your LinkedIn profile and using a hashtag Ideas and Leaders. See you in the next episode.